Momentum or relativistic momentum. Why is momentum so important in particle physics? The reason for it is where other equations such as kinetic energy is equal to half mv squared, they stop working as the velocities get higher. The momentum equation is such a robust, such a strong equation that with a slight modification it will still hold true even at the craziest speeds. So we need to apply the relationship of the relativistic momentum. So basically, momentum is equal to mass times by the velocity. We just need to consider the relativistic mass. So it means taking the rest mass and multiplying it by the Lorentz factor, gamma. So this is from the data booklet. Momentum is equal to gamma times by the rest mass times by u. Another equation that we will need to use is e squared is equal to momentum squared c squared times the rest mass squared c to the power of 4. And really, this first one here we barely use because we nearly always talk about the relativistic mass. This is the only equation we're really going to use. So whenever you see a question on the relativity paper talking about momentum, it's this and probably only this equation you're going to use. We know that the momentum is equal to mass times by velocity. The problem is that this is um, it has to be modified to include the relativistic mass. So the mass is equal to gamma times the rest mass. We've just uh, discussed this. Now we need to understand different units, more weird units. You remember energy is measured in EV, electrovolts. Mass is measured in EV, C to the minus 2. And since mass times velocity, and we could be talking about the fraction of the speed of light, we just need to multiply this quantity by the speed of light, and we end up with EV to the C to the minus 1. So these three units are going to be very convenient units when we do our calculations. So momentum is equal to gamma rest mass times by the velocity. What is the momentum of an electron traveling at 0 0.5 times the speed of light? Well, you know, the rest mass is 0 0.511 MeV per C squared. And the momentum is equal to gamma M naught U. Um, M naught, the rest mass is equal to 0 0.511. That goes here, times by U, and you're told it's 0.5 times by C. But notice that we keep the units when we're doing this. So C to minus 2 times by C. And we're going to end up with gamma times by 0 0.5 times by 0 0.511. MeV per C, or C to the minus 1. So notice how we will get a, a unit of momentum, which is MeV C to the minus 1. And you need to find out what gamma is, find out, you know, multiply by 0 0.5 and 0 0.511. And you can do that. as an object has kinetic energy, its total energy must rise, it must increase. So its total energy is equal to equal to the rest mass energy times by plus the kinetic energy. And this is also equal to mc squared. So an m is equal to gamma times by m naught. So we substitute that into the uh, total energy. And then we can rearrange uh, factorizing. We end, up the, we end up with the kinetic energy at the top is equal to gamma minus 1 m0 to the c to the squared. Solve problems involving relativistic momentum and energy. Usually these involve the manipulation of these two equations. This is the most common one and this is also needed when you're just considering the energy. When you want the momentum, this is the one you need. And here we have a question about energy and momentum. And you know because the question says, this question is about relativistic energy and momentum. So that gives you a clue. Two protons, each with the same total energy, collide head on. The following reaction occurs. We've got two protons, and they basically make three protons and one antiproton. So we have two particles making four particles. Each one of these has a rest mass of 930 MeV C to the minus 2. Deduce that for this reaction to occur, the minimum total energy of these colliding proton is 1860 MeV, stated in the assumption that you make. Well, let's assume that the total energy 
that these have is just enough to make these. In other words, these do not have any excess energy. In other words, they are rest after they are formed. Okay, that's the assumption that you we're making. So we need to find out what is the total energy after they are formed. We know that each in turn has a rest mass of 930 MeV C to minus 2 and therefore a rest mass energy of 930 MeV. So you can try to work that through now and see if you get the correct answer, which is at the bottom left here. Otherwise, I can give you a bit of help. The total minimum, the minimum total energy afterwards is the sum of those four. So it would be 4 times 930, and that's produced by two protons. So if you have 4 times 930 and you divide it by 2, that's the amount of energy that you need to start with. Next question, calculate the momentum. Well, as I said before, you must use this equation when calculating the momentum. Calculate the momentum of a proton that has a total energy of 1860 MeV. Okay, this is another question, not exactly related to this, but it's just asking this. You know the total energy is 1860. You know the rest mass, so you can find out this quantity. So you basically need to find uh, P squared, C squared, and therefore P. Another question. Um, this question is about relativistic momentum. An electron is accelerated from rest through a potential difference of 2 million volts it will end up with 2 MeV and it has a rest mass of 0 0.511 MeV now how do we do that? how do we find the momentum afterwards? well we have to use that equation again uh, this is the answer, bottom left by the way we have to use this equation again we can find the total energy before which is the kinetic energy plus the, potent, plus the, uh, the rest mass energy this is the rest mass energy squared and we can find the momentum so remember the total energy E is equal to mc squared which is in other words is m naught c squared which is the rest mass energy plus the kinetic energy and this comes from accelerating uh, the particle which is going to be 2 MeV the m naught c squared it comes from the rest mass energy so the total energy to start with is going to be the sum of these two energies, 2.511 MeV. So you know what E is. You know what M0 squared C4 is because this is the, the rest mass energy squared. And then you can work out the momentum. Another example here. We have a large particle X which is at rest before decay. It has a lot of energy. It decays and turns into small, two smaller particles that produces smaller masses, but then they've got excess, excess energy. You're told that each has the same momentum, 1490, with the same mass, and therefore they have the same energy going there. So this uh, rest mass energy is divided into two equal chunks. This is half the energy, this is half the energy. So you find out half the energy of this, and use that equation again, to find, uh, and you know the momentum this time, you know the total energy, so you find the rest mass energy. This is the answer, 937 MeV. Bit of help. The total energy of each particle is going to be half of the initial rest energy. and we have to use this equation again we know e squared you know the momentum because you're told what it is and then you have to find the rest mass and you have to square root it that's why we have the square root button at the end